Hey, I'm Tim from Under Oath, and I'm going to teach you guys some Under Oath riffs. The number one, I think, riff that everyone tries to play or talks about is the intro riff to a song called In Regards to Myself, which is the first piece of note, uh, first note you hear on Define the Great Line. So uh, we'll start with that one and work backwards. Uh, here it is, loosely full speed. <laughs> And what's funny about this riff is Spencer actually wrote this riff and I get a lot of kids coming up and going, dude, your riff on In Regards is one of my favorite things and Spencer actually wrote it. So really fun fact there. So this is just really weird because it's in a weird timing. I don't know the timing uh, and I also don't know anything about uh, guitar theory. So I can't really explain what it is, but I could show you how to play it. Everything's pretty much single notes for the first phrasing until we get to that, which is an actual uh, power chord or fifth or something like that it's called. So it's... And then this one is a weird phrasing because it's hard to tell when you're looking at it what I'm playing, but it's this chord. So then it's... And that's basically the riff, so slower all the way through would be. And then that basically repeats from there. And that's how the sausage is made. Uh, this is in drop D. Everything we've ever done until Disambiguation and Erase Me was all drop D, which is really fun because when we did our Rebirth tour, we played back to back, Chasing Safety, and to find the great line, we literally only had one guitar. This was all in drop D. We started experimenting a little bit more as we went on, and there's, I think, four or five different tunings on the new record. Another cool riff, I think, from to find the great line is the riff for returning empty-handed. It's got a really long phrasing because there's a turnaround in the drums, and it actually loops back every two times through the riff, not one, and the rhythm section for it is just... <laughs> It's that song, but the riff over that in full is. And then it kind of skips back on the drum skip. So overall, the entire riff doesn't start over until. And then it basically loops from there. Um, there's a lot of hammer offs and hammer ons. So it's all one note and slow, it's. We have a pretty cool riff on a song called Desperate Times, Desperate Measures, which we are actually playing on this tour for the first time in a while. And it's actually two parts, it's pretty simple. It starts out with a drum riff, or a drum uh, roll, and uh, the riff, all single notes. We pretty much skip this A string altogether, and slower it would be. Over that, it's a. Uh... And that's basically that. And it's not really an open here, it's just really trashy, meant to be really like rough and just nasty shit in there. Um, try to keep everything a little bit live feeling uh, instead of super dialed because we're not really a metal band. One of my favorite riffs to play is not really a riff, but it's, uh, it's a song called Breathing in a New Mentality. And the verse is actually like a pretty cool phrasing. There's not really any chords there. Um, and it comes in and there's kind of a pause and then it rips in full band. <laughs> And that's pretty simple, but the way Aaron phrases his drums, uh, I think it adds a really cool element to uh, just the driving force of this because there's not really any chord progression. There's no uh, melody. There's no um, bass running anywhere. We're all just looping that. 
and it's pretty straightforward, but slow it would be played as. And that's the hardest stretch right there, and it's one and five on both of those strings, so. There's a really cool part on I Gave Up where we had a riff from another song and the song's very uh, piano driven and super down and super chill. Even the chorus kind of comes in super driving. And so when we had that bridge, we really wanted to make that part feel a little bit um, more abstract and a little bit heavier and a little bit more lively. So we had a riff uh, that's super simple, but it's got a lot of space there. And uh, that comes in after we have a pause and Spencer says, I give up. And it's... Um and that's it, just rings out. And uh, that's really simple, all single notes, just... And then over that, I threw this really dissonant thing. And being that I don't know guitar theory, I think that allows me to uh, really just find stuff that sounds weird to my ear and not think about if it's a one or a four, if it's in the same key, or if that makes it more dissonant or not. So while that's playing, it sounds really, really strange by itself. But over it, uh, it adds a really interesting um, vibe to it. And so if we were coming in on the one, one, two, three, four, it's just... That's basically it. Um, super simple. But I think we found, after having a lot of um, really hard riffs to play and really simple riffs to play, the amount of technicality and the amount of busyness of a riff doesn't dictate anything in the way a song feels. Um, some of our hardest riffs to play are the ones that really don't have the same impact as just having something really straightforward and driving. Um, so for me, that's how I do stuff and it's all backwards. I don't think anyone really asks me, how do I sound like you on guitar? I think uh, it's funny because I, I genuinely don't know anything um, about theory and our stage manager does and a kid uh, today actually in uh, Cleveland um, came up to me at meet and greet and just shook my hand and said, you know, uh, you're a really huge influence on my guitar playing. Like you're, uh, I think he said, you're dissonant minor seconds that you sprinkle in a lot really, uh, whatever, mean a lot to me, or uh, he, he was impressed. And then I called uh, JJ over, our stage manager, and said, this guy sh just said I play a dissonant minor seconds a lot. Do I do that? And he's like, yep, all the time. I was like, all right, cool. I've thought about learning more theory. Uh, I'm afraid that for me, writing the way I've written for so long, um, knowing more might actually hurt because then I'd have more rules and maybe feel more restricted and we always be thinking about whatever it is, whether it be the Nashville scale or this or that. And I think in a weird way, like that's why a lot of our stuff is a little bit more unique and not uh, so structured and stitched together perfectly because we're not really thinking about it through a lens like that. But yeah, I don't know. I'd say if you want to be really good at shredding and be a touring musician for other bands, learn guitar really well. If you want to be creative, uh, learn as much as you need to get to where you want to go and don't, don't overcomplicate it. I didn't really like guitar. Um, I mean, I liked the guitar, but I didn't, never really looked at it like a, a thing to like show people how good you are at it. Same with drum solos and guitar solos. Like people that solo, I, I think it's impressive, but um, it's not necessary. It'd be like me showing you whatever, like my car collection or my bank account if I was rich. Like, it's, it's impressive, but it really doesn't make me like you anymore. You know what I mean? I didn't really learn a lot of riffs. Probably, oddly enough, one of the first riffs I ever learned was probably an old Under Oath riff 
because I tried out for the band. The band was together for two years before I joined when I was 17, and I had to try out and uh, had to learn all their stuff. Um, so that was probably a riff called The Last, which I don't even know if I can play now. I mean, remember it, I can definitely play it, but. <laughs> Something like that. Yep. Hold on. Is there a... I haven't played that in like 15 years. But yeah. That's probably the first riff I played. I don't really like Zeppelin or any of that stuff, so I don't like nerd out on like cool rock bands. So... That was it. I've only been playing guitar for like two years when I tried out, so I was still learning power chords and Blink-182 songs and Zayo riffs. I liked them, they were a local band. Um, I used to go to all their shows and one day their guitar player just came up to me and uh, said one of our guys is leaving and we, we play shows together and do you want to try out? And I said, yeah, it'd be sick. And then uh, we did it. As story has it, I was actually checking my guitar to that riff actually. Um, and we were playing a show with them and they weren't here and then they walked in, like got there to load in right as I was checking and they're like, who's playing our song? And they're like, oh, that guy. And they're like, oh, well, we need a guitar player, so see if he wants to try out. And that was, oddly enough, one of the easiest riffs they had and the rest of it was painful. <laughs> cool.